One of the most electric LSU football players of all time and now the running backs coach, Kevin Falk. And really, when you talk about the golden age, I saw a piece yesterday on WAFB with Jacques, who's done a tremendous job during this COVID uh, pandemic without sports and bringing entertainment to his viewers on WAFB. If you've been watching the sports reports, they've been fantastic. But he had a sit down yesterday with a couple of former players in Ryan Clark and Anthony McFarland and Booger McFarland, who were uh, who were a part of that time of LSU football when Kevin Falk decided to come to LSU. And both those guys decided uh, after Falk had made the decision coming out of Karen Crow to, uh, to join the LSU program. And if you can go back to this time, and some of our listeners can't go back because they just weren't around yet, but the early 90s, LSU football was a graveyard. I mean, it was, it was a laughing stock as far as when you talked about not only in the conference, but from a, nas- a national standpoint, uh, when, when, when you had an opportunity to get a, a big-time recruit, especially out of, out of the state, you just swung and missed every time, whether it was um, you know, guys out of New Orleans that were going to Tennessee, Miami, Florida State, guys out of Baton Rouge that were doing the same thing, and Kevin Falk. Was that when Work Done would have gone to Work Florida Done State? was going to Florida State. A lot of those guys that, like, Raynock Thompson was coming out of uh, New Orleans and went to Tennessee at the time. I mean, you're talking about big-time, high-end players uh, that played long time in the NFL. Ed Reed, yeah. Ed Reed at that time, yep. uh, went, went went to the University of Miami. He was after Falk, but um, you know Falk was the guy that you can pinpoint that really changed the momentum and the feeling around LSU football for at least local recruits. And that's what Ryan Clark and Booger were talking about yesterday with Jacques. That he kind of changed the way you thought about LSU because when guys that were peers of his or guys that looked up to Falk coming up through high school at the time were saying to themselves, well, damn, if Kevin Falk can go to LSU, I guess I, I want to go to LSU too because, you know, he was getting more attention, a better player than me in, in, in high school. And um, it, it's, it's kind of wild that it's still being debated for him to be a college football Hall of Famer because a lot of, for a lot of us, especially for me, like he was, when he was in his prime, I was like 15, 16, 17 years old. So, I mean, it was when you're, you're, you're passionate yeah. about it you love it yeah. you know what I mean I was showing up to LSU games with Falk jerseys on you know I mean he was he was the ultimate um and, and yeah, it's, so, it's so still to, crazy to me that we're still talking about him being on the ballot well I guess so I, I would think that too until you start to look at the ballot and the 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 amount of players that 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 are on this ballot. I mean you got like guys like Ray Lewis who are still not in there. I saw like Ed McCaffrey. Like just just a perusing of the list uh, gives you an idea of how deep this nominee class really is. And, and I've been looking for an answer. Maybe somebody in the huddle can help me out. I'm trying to find the exact number of nominees that get in every year. The 2019 class, I think, had 13 players and two coaches. So out of these 79, I think you can expect to whittle that down. But yeah, I mean, I, I think I, I don't think it's really much of a question at all. And maybe there is some local bias in here, but it doesn't seem like much of a question at all that you would put Kevin Falk in the College Football Hall of Fame. What is the best conference in college football? SEC. Right? And as you said in the intro, who is the SEC leader uh, in all-purpose yards all time? Kevin Falk, 6,833. I mean, that feels kind of open and shut right there, right? A, a conference that has had guys like uh, Bo Jackson, Herschel Walker, uh, like Derrick Henry more recently, you know, all of these just unreal marking, whatever, these these unreal players and nobody was as effective in as many facets of the game as Kevin Falk. So absolutely, it's it's open and shut. Uh, he should be in this class. I just, I you, you never know how these things worked out. There's always a lot of kind of jockeying and politicking going on behind the scenes as to who gets in. Tons of humility from LSU's running back coach. You rarely get him to talk about himself when you bring him in for an interview. So we'll try to get a couple of memories from him, but we'll ask him about Tom Brady and Tampa Bay. But we really want to specifically ask you about some of the guys on this roster. A guy like Cavantre Bradford, uh, we're all talking about the the three-headed, the three-headed competition at running back this year with Chris Curry. uh, And you think about John Emery and you've got TDP there, Uh, but they did sign Cavantre Bradford out of Texas. Big guy, nearly six feet, 5'11", 190. Chose LSU over Ohio State. And if you remember what Ogeron said immediately when they hired Falk was how impressive of a recruiter he was. I think you know what you get for him on the field. That was one of the things that that I, I was talking about in just the limited time we saw uh, 
you know, LSU on the field for spring drills was how impressive Falk was on the field yeah. in getting the attention from his guys and the respect that he commands not only from the running back group but from everybody on the offensive side of the field. When he speaks, you can tell everybody's paying attention. And from a recruiting standpoint, Ogeron sold him early on on how successful he was. I think LSU had a junior day scheduled before the COVID uh, pandemic, and, and Falk had 100% participation from the guys that he was looking to get to that camp. I mean, there was uh, people, uh, you know, some of the running backs in the state of Louisiana and throughout the Southeast that he had on campus at LSU, uh, and that was very impressive well, to the head coach. And, and a lot, of, and the, the, I think one of the reasons for that is a lot of times with these assistant coaches, if you're just a high school kid, um, you've probably never heard of them, right? And so they have to win you over with personality. They have to uh, sell you and convince you on the idea that they are very good at their job and that, and that, they, that you should trust your skill set and your future with them. They can put you in the best position. Where Kevin Falk has just a built-in advantage over so many other assistant coaches throughout the country is that, like, first off, a lot of guys, especially in Louisiana, but just around – a lot of guys are going to know him immediately mm -hmm. because he is a big football name. But even if, the, you know, these are 18-year-old kids, right? So even if they're too young, how heavy is the flex when you walk in and you have multiple Super Bowl rings on and now you have a national championship ring? Well, I mean, he, and he can just float that hand in front of you and say, you want to know my credentials? You want to know why I'm the man to coach you, why I'm the man for the job? Look at this hand. And look at what I've accomplished. Well, Mickey it tells Joseph, itself. Mickey Joseph has telling a great recruiting story about Falk when, um, you know, you get in front of some of these guys and they don't know who he is. Yeah. And then you get back in front of them the second time and they had Googled him and YouTubed him <laughs> and they're like, damn, yeah. Falk's a beast. <laughs> you know, like, so when you get in front of them the yeah. second time, they're kind of like, I didn't know who you were three weeks ago. A little but now you're a the dog, second time you know, around. Three Super yeah. Bowl rings later with Tom Brady and the all-time all SEC a leader in all purpose yards. And, and, now, and now he has an LSU natty ring to throw on top of that and, mix. And some of his highlights. And, and look, Falk, uh, you, you want to talk about a recruiting pitch in, a, in front of a kid in, in Louisiana. He's got a state championship ring, oh, wow. a college football <laughs> national championship ring, and a Super Bowl ring that all came from the Superdome. Oh, that's wild. You know what I mean? That's really wild. You talk wild. about one of, the, one of the best football players of all time to come out of this state has won at every level a championship in the most recognizable building in the state of Louisiana, and now he's representing LSU as the running backs coach. It's a perfect fit. It's the uh, first and only LSU jersey that I ever owned was that beautiful yep. number three LSU. And then obviously, because my old man, I already had a huge affinity for the number three. So the fact that he was such a beast was just a perfect, uh, perfect lining up of things. I also remember, I'll never get this poster of him that I had printed out and like taped up on my wall. He was just, yeah, like, like, like you said, he, he, he was the one kind of at the – forefront of making college football cool again. And then you saw similar kind of echo effects when Glenn Dorsey committed to yeah. LSU and the, and the, and the kind of in-state talent that he brought in with him. And, uh, and, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hyped to talk about Falk, about coaching, about these players, about the hall of fame, about it all. I always tell the story about Falk when, you know, those sentimental objects that you have, whenever you clean out your closet, you clean out, your, uh, you know, your dresser drawers that you, you yeah. say, look, man, I'm getting rid of everything that I don't wear, and, and you're you're pretty, you're, you're strong and bullheaded about it, but then you get to that one piece, and mm. you're like, dude, I can't get rid of this. Yeah. I can't get rid of For the longest time, I had a Falcom Up t-shirt uh -huh. that we bought before the <laughs> Alabama game in 1995. In the middle of Dalrymple, there was a college kid slinging, like, bootleg t-shirts, walking down the middle of traffic. He had them over his shoulder, just kind of slinging them for $20 a piece. And a buddy of mine bought it right off of his shoulder, threw it over our shirt that we were wearing, wore it into the game that day, and just never got rid of it. Yeah, like always had it. And it was a picture I understand of a, a good game day shirt and a Falcom up. You know, like that yeah. was the quote, and then it had like a pocket on the front with a with a all eyes on three. So obviously, the 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 business play here, yes, is to bring it back, but with the Jimbo with the punch picture. Yeah. With the with the Jimbo nephew punch picture, right. fuck him up with 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 Kate Beasy full extension. No and full that extension. Dude jaw I, just, I, I want him hands by his side with that death stare at him, <laughs> with kind of that like I'm coming at you look. You know what I mean? With that kid's like, what did I get myself into, man? Yeah, I'm not dude. even supposed to be here.